Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences online satsang. This satsang is an opportunity for everybody to meet and discuss the spiritual matters, especially regarding the path of knowledge. Those who are new, they are given some guidance and we conduct our program from the satsang. Those who are who are in the program, they can get their questions answered, doubts cleared. So all questions are most welcome. Vikas is asking, is Tom's Park same as the astral world's projected states that Ishwar Puri speaks about? It is not a state. It is a world. There is a difference between states and worlds. All the difference is only technical. So just like you are in a world right now, there is a body and there is a state that is called the waking state. It is possible to create another world, another body and that will be called another state. We call it the projected state. There is one thing that should be kept in mind that there are only states. There are no worlds or no bodies. So you must have seen in the program, there is a drawing which shows that the layers extend into the universal memory and these these extensions are called the worlds. And then the layers are seen by the senses present in the layers as a body. The sum total of the senses is perceived as coming from a point and that point is assumed to be me. This is the phenomena that is happening in all the worlds, all the states and you can see it right now also. It is assumed that I am here inside the head as the center of all the senses. What is the center of all the senses? The brain. But uh, that is an illusion. It is not true. Because if the senses are moved somewhere else and the dominant senses, they are moved into the other parts of the layer. Layer means the body because layer is projected as a body. Then that uh, person will assume that I am there. Suppose all your senses are moved in the feet, then you are going to assume that I am somehow located in the feet. So that is an illusion. The real you is the screen on which all this scene is happening. And uh, the main thing to note is that the witness or the experiencer remains the same in all the states. This is the founding statement of spirituality. What is it that does not change when the states change? And the ancient people, they found it out. That is me. That is the experiencer. If there were no state changes, let us assume that the state did not change, it always remained the waking state, more or less, then there won't be any spirituality. There was no possibility of any spiritual knowledge. The illusion is so convincing that we would be born in this illusion, we we would die in this illusion. Fortunately for us, the layered structure goes through different states and there is the opportunity to see what does not change when the whole body, whole world, whole personality all the people, all the entities, all the past, all the future changes right in front of your eyes. But you don't. Your true nature remains the same witness, experiencer, Atman. Just because this happens, spiritual knowledge becomes possible. Otherwise, there was no way to know who am I. There was no way to know that this existence is the witness. And if the states did not change, There was no way to know the layered structure also. And you can see that those who are not so evolved, those who are not spiritual, who are completely material, what do they assume? They assume that they are the body, they are inside their heads somehow, created by the brain and the world is real. There is only one reality which is this world, the earth. And this is not only found in West. This is the dominant view in the West because of uh, poor development of spiritual traditions. But this is also very commonly found in India and other Eastern countries. And that is because people here, they paid attention to the changes of states. They explored the states. Instead of dismissing them as some activity of the body, which is unimportant. And this exploration led to non-dualism. This is the story of spirituality. That is why many traditions, they are focused on change and control of states. They want to refine the mind progressively so that it can stay in some particular state. States are given importance because 
of this reason only that this is the sure way to know who you are and unfortunately this is not possible without some spiritual growth which has already happened like we say the right time comes only due to grace nobody can bring it you can cultivate the environment the body the mind so that the right time comes quickly or it comes without any obstacles that much is possible but certainly mastery over states it comes only by grace which is our well known evolution as we evolve through repetitive births we reach a point where the intellect or the layered structure becomes so developed that it can ultimately take hold of the states and there is the possibility of spiritual knowledge so what non dualism has done they have taken a shortcut but their knowledge is based on this foundation only without this play of states there was no possibility and they found that it is possible to know some things even without doing this circus of states it is possible to know the basics while staying in the waking state alone and that was their genius that was their the mankind's biggest discovery and that gave rise to the highest philosophy possible in the universe which is non dualism advait or the eternal knowledge sanatan philosophy because even if this is forgotten the evolution continues and the same results will be obtained again and again by all the intelligent creatures they will all discover the same non duality again and again throughout the cycles and yes this knowledge is going to go away very soon this is already predicted it is just like the electric bulb it flickers for a while before fusing completely before going bad completely flickers for a while then it's gone so you are witnessing this flickering of knowledge now few people get it that's all those who master the states they also don't get it because the illusion is so convincing that they assume that yes this is me which is seen in every state is me i change my forms from the physical to the astral to the some other non physical forms i am the one that is taking births this much will be known by any person who is ignorant but has mastered the states because mastery of the states does not require higher knowledge it comes by practice or by grace by chance if you live in this kind of environment where this is considered normal routine to change the states then the child that is born in this kind of society will naturally be gifted with this control over the states but without guru it is not possible to know the truth of the states because it takes a very high intelligence to find something of value it is just like the car mechanic or anybody can repair the machines can open the machines can do whatever they want to fix it and can invent a few things tools etc to get their job done but they cannot design a new machine it takes another level of intelligence the engineering intelligence they can repair whatever is already built that much is their capability engineering intelligence is limited because they know some rules of thumb they have extensive knowledge but not the basic principles they cannot discover something new sometimes they do but it takes a scientist to do the fundamental research in the same way simply having the mastery over the states does not make you spiritual you need a guru to learn you need that kind of intelligence to conclude something from this play of states so we have taken the shortcut on the path of knowledge and we get the basic knowledge the essential knowledge without changing the states or you can say without having a mastery over the states it is possible to know your true essence what to do after that and this topic came up many times now i know everything i am the brahman i am the whole existence now what is the use of this mind and body now many must have guessed that the use is in application of the knowledge yes some people don't prefer it because the knowledge is so blissful they want to float away in the bliss for many thousand years not assuming any body not venturing into any worlds but uh, there are few that will say i want to play this play which is me only this dream is my dream and i can create any dream so they get the mastery over the states 
and they get the mastery over the bodies in the state which is nothing but the layer actually it is a combination of layer this was modified in the version 2 of the program in the older version i simply called all layers as having one body but uh, that is not so accurate so now it is refined and we are calling a group of layers as a body which is true because right now you can see that the person here has many layers not one layer so the projected person also has few layers not just one layer and this group of layers they appear as a structure that will be called a body or you can say more accurately body mind so they venture into this study of this body minds and layers and the surrounding part of the body mind which is the world it is actually one the world the body the mind is one it's one thing and this is a profound discovery because just like you can change your mind at will you should be able to change your body at will and then you should be able to change the world simply by willing will is called intention and intention is the source of all magic which is called tantra so some people go into this tantra technology and they master the bodies they master the minds they master the worlds and those who are intelligent they do not manipulate these things because it is perfect as it is created by the biggest engineer of all devi herself mother nature so what do they do with this ability they create their own worlds they create their own bodies and they create their own creatures that inhabit those worlds in other words they become the gods so what tom has done <laughs> is a baby step towards becoming a god in one of the podcast i said that the world you are right now in is actually created by a few tantrics that is not entirely true they hacked that which was originally present and they made it suitable for knowledge and they protected it in the ancient um, scriptures they will be called the rishis but uh, the rishi is uh, kind of very very respectful name they are engineers architects of universes and actually we are living in their bodies this world is their body our intelligence is so limited that as soon as i say they or a, i name somebody rishi or tantric people start imagining a person no 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 they start imagining a human but no they are not humans these things are entire universes can they appear as human yes they can appear as anything they want that reminds me of very ancient or you can say childish belief that when people die they become stars they tell this to children to probably distract them <laughs> that look your grandfather who died yesterday has become the star how did the thought about this you know ancient people were not stupid the modern people are very stupid but ancient were not stupid why did they say that can anybody guess how can the dead person become a star yes anjali is right her guess is right that they have made their own world there the star comes from the word astral or the astral comes from the star they are there now <laughs> dinesh is saying entire universe is me that is final statement but we are not talking about that we are talking about the illusory world worlds the illusion it was believed or you can say they knew these things that ultimately the evolution takes you to this level that you become the universe or you become at least a world somewhere you give birth to this whole scenery of world bodies minds so it is poetically said that the dead person has hopefully left this world forever and will be evolved and will become something which is just like this universe so yesterday he died and today he is star not possible it will take millions of years of evolution so the tantric is not in a hurry to create the worlds so i know of at least three or four groups that have tried this experiment of creating small world one of our group created a temple like structure you know those greek temples with big pillars and all big statues so these people they tried to create that world and one one of the group that tried to create an island only one island small island with hills and coconut trees beaches and so on and this is the third experiment that i am seeing and the indian scriptures not scriptures actually ancient books full of these stories where these rishis or tantrics or powerful people they create entire worlds 
we think these are stories but they are stories yes but there is some um, truth behind these stories it cannot be purely wild imagination because we are not humans are not capable of imagining something which is never in their experience so creation of the worlds is a basic training in the occult in the tantra bodhi we are going to introduce one chapter which will teach you to create a small world anjali singh the level of imagination should be extraordinary to create such world the imagination is one of the ingredients of occult without imagination nothing can be created actually all that can be done is imagination nothing gets created it is only imagined arvind is saying shri m has talked about serpent creature who came to visit his guru on earth can we say such a creature came from such a world we can say anything because open ended isn't it open ended speculation so out of the infinite possibilities of the illusion this thing this serpent creatures and so on not impossible isn't it everything is possible but did it really happen we don't know there is no evidence so you need to trust the guru and it is possible that they came from one of the non physical worlds how to know whether somebody is from non physical not physical our universe only few people will be able to see them those with the eyes those with this kind of vision and those who are restricted to the five senses will never see them never hear them and these are majority <laughs> so those who can see using the non physical senses they were called mad crazy there was a time when these people were called divine or something like this god's people who could see things which nobody could now it is reverse if you can see something which nobody can see you are sent to asylum vandita singh sharing today's experience i was sitting in a real waiting room and watching people around thoughts were coming initially and at one point this stop just observation okay very good experience so the this is a by product or you can say side effect of the awareness practice if you are doing the awareness practice if there is a intention to be aware then these states can happen spontaneously and this can happen in presence of those who are already aware whose awareness is touching the skies if you stay with these people you will also get the glimpse now the exact mechanism of why this happens is not known but you will hear these kind of experiences from many seekers that i went to this guru and this happened <laughs> then i went there again nothing happened so some people they are in a habit of visiting these gurus or saints or sadhus just for some kind of experience but it won't happen if you are not walking sincerely on the path Pratibhi Singh, shall I share something? Why it happens? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Pranam Guru Ji. Pranam. Actually, I have seen that uh, whenever a seeker gives uh, attention in a very loving way, or in a, even in a little surrender to the person having high awareness or at least uh, more advanced than the seeker, then just by being paying uh, a loving attention to the master. the seeker also gets the similar qualities for example um, let's say the uh, master have mastered the sweet emotions in him okay 24 hours the master is in the bliss now if a seeker who has not done even a bit of sadhana for energizing that particular layer if he comes or sits or gets in touch or even pays giving attention towards the master then he gets the seed from the sadhana of the guru and that seed after some months or maybe depending on the intensity of seeker that seed grows up suddenly and out of the after some months the seeker finds that from where this quality of sweet emotion is coming inside me obviously all the layers are present in the seeker also but just by being in in resonance with the master those particular layers get activated even when seeker are not doing any sadhana for that particular layer so this i have seen and the only common element i have found is the loving attention when a seeker pays to the master things happen rampantly 
Yes, yes. Very good explanation. Nothing can explain it. Only the intention to become just like the master or the guru. And um, you can call it resonance or something that they are attuned to the master now. So yes, it can be called seeding. It is just like seeding. I have heard many stories like this. And this is the sign of progress. So one vita is progressing nicely then. But those who are not having these experiences, they need not become frustrated. They need not give up the search or the practice. Because it's not necessary that these, these things will happen to everybody. You can progress nicely and uh, quickly even without getting all these experiences. Experiences of oneness, of complete silence or of other worlds or visions. And they need not happen, you see. But will they never happen? No, no. They will eventually happen. You should prepare yourself mentally for these experiences. So the life becomes magical. Just like he said, <laughs> the more devoted you are to your um, study and uh, practice, the fruits will be seen quickly. And if you are doing it as a side job, then it will take time. And if it is only your hobby, <laughs> probably nothing will happen. These are signs of progress, but they are not the necessary signs. Everybody should do get this thing. Only then they will be called progressing. No, no. The progress is seen mostly by self-evaluation, not by experiences. So check what is the internal environment. What is going on inside you? That will give you a more accurate picture of whether you are progressing or not. So after practicing comes the evaluation. And that is why we have it as step number five in the program. After three months of practicing awareness, we want to check what happened. <laughs> are there any returns of our investment? And those who are in the program, they should not think that we need to do it, do it only once during the program. You need to do it for the whole of your life. The program simply teaches you how to do it. So you learn how to do it. You learn how to practice the awareness. Practice mindfulness, Sakshi Bhav. And then you do it whole of your life. Then you learn how to do the self-evaluation. And then you do it whenever you want. Every six months is okay. And then you will become a master in it. That you can do your self-evaluation in a minute. You will know your whole structure, the layered structure, intimately. Each and every corner of it will be known. Will be in the light of awareness. Side effect of this is that you will be able to evaluate others also. That is also told in the videos. This is like a minor power. So those who have finished the program and they are wondering what to do for the rest of my life, you have a lot of things to do. Spreading of knowledge is one thing which is major actually. But these are other activities which will keep you on the path. Otherwise the illusion is so strong that it will wipe you out. You will disappear back in the illusion. Although if you are in contact with the Guru, Guru won't let it happen so easily. But your will is topmost, most important. If you do not express your will, nothing will be done. So we get motivated by looking at people who are progressing, by looking at the masters, the great people, by reading, by watching. And that should arose will in you to progress. And if you have the will, there will be a way. The best way is the path of knowledge. Sanjay is asking, besides spreading of knowledge, what activities can a seeker engage in post-completion of program? Just like I said, you can create the whole universes if you want. The, it totally depends on your will. But there is one will in you to spread the knowledge, to benefit all the seekers. And there can be other things like uh, research, because the research is not actually spreading of knowledge, but you can invent, discover new things. That is one thing. If you have a lot of money, you can assist the people who are spreading the knowledge without doing it directly, without teaching indirectly. Or you can assist in the efforts of your master, help in that which he is doing in any way possible. So, But these are small things. Big job that you have is your own progress, your own evolution. By your, I mean this creatures. We cannot even call it my evolution. We can um, simply say that the evolution is happening. It is nobody's evolution. And then we, because everything is me, so it looks like my will. And then we go and fulfill our desire to evolve. That is one thing. But uh, the most important uh, 
job for any seeker is to rise above the human birth that is told traditionally although i don't give it that much importance but it looks like that many of our students many seekers after getting the knowledge their primary goal becomes end of human birth so if you are interested in that that can be done systematically and the method is given in path of knowledge also that as soon as your karmic storage is over as soon as your to do list in the human body is over there won't be any human birth so you try to finish that as artistically as skillfully as possible as beautifully as possible so you can note down these things 1 2 3 4 5 6 many things to do isn't it or you can simply sit and enjoy the show because you are not the doer you are the witness then everything is already happening as it must as it should it's already happening more in a most perfect way so both choices are actually same there is a li- little bit of doership in the first but i am doing it no problem because you know that it is not true and the second is mostly the way of surrender where whatever comes happens it is done automatically bk is saying i am new recently i listened to a podcast on youtube and feel feel good so where do i start yes you can start from the 3d program which gives you a brief introduction to the path of knowledge which is being taught here you can choose your vandita has given the link there you can go to the 3d program link and choose your sorry you can apply for this program which is free and which is online and after that you decide what to do if you like this path or not and then you will be given more hmm or you can simply attend the satsang here for few weeks see whether you like this or not or listen to the old recordings and then you can do the 3d program if you want or you can directly jump into the path that is a good start arvind is saying who are nirmanakaya is this possible for a yogi to create a body for himself on this earth is the nirmanakaya it comes from buddhism you know the sambhog kaya the nirmanakaya and all this various kayas kaya means a body so we assume different kinds of bodies that is what they are saying which is general knowledge probably for all of you it is possible to have many kinds of bodies yes kosha sharira many words many names so is it possible for a yogi to create a body for himself on this earth and not yogi <laughs> the yogi is interested in samadhi not in bodies tantrics yes they are interested in superior bodies so yes it is possible that somebody on the yog path is also an occult it is possible isn't it somebody on the path of knowledge is an occult or in yog in kundalini these things happen so if you know this art it will be possible to create any body including a physical body now there are many kinds of tricks and uh, many methods to achieve this and one of the cheap way without doing much effort is to simply possess some other body and this must be very familiar <laughs> for many people you simply possess another body you are getting old now you are 80 years you want to continue your service or you want to continue your um, practice but you don't want this trouble of rebirth you don't want to waste your 20 years in going through the womb again so you simply possess another body young body and that should be illegal isn't it that is not recommended so what do they do they possess a body which died naturally that is called the parakaya pravesh you see kaya word appears here also so in the in this tiny articles on tantra i have given three or four ways to incarnate to assume a body so one is through natural birth where the little body the baby appears in the world by natural process that is one way second way is to simply possess another body dead or alive depends on your ethical moods and uh, third way is to create a, bo- a body for yourself which is the superior way which is what we do in the independent tantra probably that will that will be called the nirman kaya because nirman means creation isn't it so you can create any body you want and probably it will be very difficult to do this in physical but it is child's play in the non physical it can be done any body any age male female any creature bird snake elephant because these blueprints are already there in your causal body you have already assumed these bodies now you simply recall <laughs> yes just by willing it 
but it is not that easy also you see you need to be competent in this art and then you need a guru so bk is asking can you tell statement of krishna murti truth is a pathless land what he meant actually nobody can tell what the other gurus are saying simply from two or three words it will be very difficult unless i am some kind of phd on krishna murti where i have read all the books all i have heard all the talks so i can only guess i can tell you what i mean by my statements isn't it but what the others are saying you can only guess it is best to ask the teacher why did you say this but obviously he is not there right now so we can say truth is the pathless land probably he means that you cannot reach the truth by traveling there or by doing a systematic practice you cannot reach the truth it is an act of grace there is no path to the truth now why did he say that because if that were possible we would have taught everybody in schools in colleges everywhere everybody would have known what the truth is but that is not possible what is possible is what i call as ripening ripening means a time comes in the life of this human being that he becomes ready for the truth and then the guru appears in front of him gives him the truth as simple as that then why do we keep saying you should join this path that path probably the time is coming that is why that is why that person is listening to any guru reading any books on spirituality because the time is near so we simply take care that this opportunity is not lost by guiding that person suitably and uh, that is my interpretation but but who knows what he said abhishek is saying there is no path to truth because truth is the path this is what krishnamurti mean yes that can be one more interpretation but you see you should not start with krishnamurti <laughs> if you are a newcomer to spirituality do not start with j krishnamurti start with somebody who is accessible not the somebody who is so cryptic and uh, mysterious simple people you see vivekanand ram krishna arbindo ghosh raman maharshi raman maharshi is also not that accessible ne sardat and those who are on the youtube you know in that website you will get a page where i have listed three, many teachers they are hand picked i mean i have seen them talk i have listened to their talks it is not simply search engine kind of thing so go to those channels listen to them and there is something which we can understand so i never recommend these teachers to my students i recommend those who speak very very clearly once you understand what they are saying that means once you get the knowledge then you can go and read these mysterious people it's a waste of time parati bi saying krishna murti is for hair splitters very good to frustrate intellect you see his style is total um, you can say revocation of all the traditions and so he is not good for newcomers the newcomer should start from a tradition and then you let go of the tradition then you join the gang of krishna murtis right now <laughs> you won't understand anything yes his teachings are so different and he denies everything that uh, kind of not useful for beginners he is useful if you have uh, very solid beliefs if you blindly worship your tradition then you listen to krishna murti and he will make you straight but uh, personally i never listen to him that much only very very rarely there is another krishna murti i forgot his name what is his name the very handsome man with long hair uj <laughs> uj yes never listen to him initially you will leave the spirituality if you listen to him so he breaks down down everything you see including the advait and everything some teachers are simply clean up mechanisms bk is asking can i know your routine when you come in telegram every wednesday 10 pm in night indian time every wednesday 10 pm vikas is saying i once heard a francis lucile mentioned that krishna murti had a spot on intuition but he was not established in his understanding ug was in that case <laughs> yes these people they were successful in attracting the attention of the people because of their rebellious nature although in spite of them jay krishna murti was offered this post of shankaracharya of puri so on you see he was offered many medals and all because ultimately probably he said the same thing in different language 
be kissing i'm your new student from bangladesh most welcome and hopefully this will be beneficial for you and you will progress my advice is always this you know do not start by from a guru start from a path see which path attracts you most and these people the ug and jk they are they don't belong to any path they don't belong to any tradition even the same thing can be said about osho he is not from a single tradition and so the noodle soup is so dense that you will get lost in their never never land of talks so best to pick something simple like path of knowledge or even this what you call ashtang yog check what they are saying what they are asking you to do what is the practice and then you keep your luxury time you know your spare time for these out of the margin cases marginal cases ug jk osho niche whoever you like you can read them bk is asking watching movies helpful or harmful for the spiritual path depends on the type of movies you are watching if they are extremely violent extremely low grade movies then obviously they are harmful if it is good entertainment and intellectually pleasing then go ahead it will help you and there is a specific type of movies which are called philosophical or you can say science fiction also mystery and spiritual so those movies they are not going to give you any knowledge but is just entertainment good entertainment arvind is asking can we say that pok is the most appropriate path for the world today see if you are a promoter of the knowledge then obviously you are going to advertise like this that yes is the most beautiful is the complete best path and that is all marketing yes we should say like this but the world is a mixed bag nobody is equal here in any way it is they are not equal in terms of financial conditions health body intelligence emotions and indoctrination everybody is different so how can one path be suitable for the whole world you know the one path is not even suitable for uh, you and your brother that is also impossible arvind is saying the world is mostly intellectual today compared to the early times we don't know about the early times actually probably the number is greater these days not the percentage not the percentage the number is greater yes and my view is that in all the times except the satyug the percentage is the same 1% are intellectual people 99% are not but today because billions of people are there you know 1% is also a very big number so what we do we do not go after the statistics we simply wait for the right person like pratip said for ripe fruits these ripe fruits are found in every time every age and every country so the educated people today they are in a good position to comprehend the path of knowledge and now including this program that we are doing is crafted in this way that it will be easily graspable for anybody who is educated in our school and college system so what we have done is we have changed the teaching depending on the ability of the people it is reverse actually and it it happens in every time every you can say age that the teachings are modified to suit the people at the time is is never that people will change themselves the guru needs to change so yes there is a opportunity now that in this form which is presented in our path of knowledge program and being presented by many teachers actually not only me it is very beneficial for at least those who are educated but what happens you must have seen is that education is simply another kind of indoctrination their own intellect becomes their enemies why because they cannot let go of their education now so we need to somehow circumvent this fortification of their minds what is your education doing is turning you into a materialistic laborer slave and that is a big problem so we find people who are bored of this thing or they are kind of suffering from the modernization i am talking about the intellectual people intellectual kind of people now we don't want to comment on anybody else because they have their own paths so what happens is they either they get bo- they get bored of their intellectuality they do not find any answers there in your education system or they suffer a lot 
because of how the societies are set up and then they look for the guru and the guru is waiting for this <laughs> so the, the situation is more complicated than we can imagine and i don't claim to understand it at all but this is the play that is going on that those who are ready they get it anyway no matter what kind of personality that is intellectual non intellectual it does not matter what kind of body that person has or in which country they are you know it can be a little bit difficult or easy that's all but those who are ready some help is sent to them somehow this is being ensured and yes we take advantage of the social situations sometimes <laughs> we exploit the people because saying i'm getting lazy when when i'm trying to know spiritually i want to get rid of that krishna murti is responsible for it it is not a big problem you see it is ultimately it will be an advantage but yes systematic disciplined and step by step approach is the best arvind is asking guru appears when the seeker is ready please elaborate it is very easy to see actually if that person is not ready that person has no inner will or has no not enough intelligence to understand what the guru is saying then even if he is surrounded by all the scriptures all the temples all the gurus all the stories he won't be able to pick up anything this is common sense isn't it we are all like this we are born in india but <laughs> it took so many years to understand one single thing who am i so when the seeker reaches a certain point he becomes recipient of knowledge he can receive the knowledge we call it uh, in sanskrit the patra patra means utensil you know clay pot now you can fill fill him with the knowledge otherwise not everybody is a clay pot but they are standing upside down <laughs> nothing goes in so uh, when the seeker not seeker the person matures to a level and the interest arises in him through the grace of god then the guru discovers this person or he starts finding and as soon as the guru notices that you know, he is ready the guru does his effort to put him on the path and this effort is like a big drama company you see everything possible is done to pull him out of the world it is two way actually you are seeking and the guru is also seeking the proper student so that is why we say it is a net a net to catch the fish it is not that the guru is interested in in turning everybody in this world into a spiritual person you know that is impossible why do we do the marketing because you want to spread the net so that those who are seeking they will at least hear and they will be attracted once they are in the net they are gone just like the fish are drawn out of the water the student is drawn out of the world by hook or crook or by any means possible you say the guru has no rules and often uh, there is failure you you see many times there is a lot of failure so that is why we say we come with a list the guru comes with a list so those who complete the program they will notice this thing that it was a trap nothing else you know the guru's struggle is two way on the one hand he is trying to lure the people into spirituality and on the other hand he is trying to throw away those who are not yet ripe we pick the ripe fruit sometimes we get the raw ones we throw them away so this thing is designed like this it's kind of filter pratip is saying you are creating traps which will go on trapping even without you actually i am not doing it this is since the beginning of the time this is happening this is the only way to do the farming you see <laughs> what else you can call it mother nature produces the seekers and the guru is like a farmer checks who is ripe picks them puts them in the, on the next level so this is how it is happening you see this is the system of spirituality that is timeless this was told very nicely in your hindi series of gyan sutra which i want to make it into english this is the overall system of spirituality which is happening in all the worlds not only in this world so that is why we say when the seeker is ready yes then the guru can start the work you see if they are not ready cannot do much that is why i keep saying that your will is paramount your will is most important then the guru will do anything possible to materialize your wish because he is saying 
ultimately i feel that the seeker realizes the guru to be existence brahman itself it's only as long as the seeker believes himself to be an individual yes obviously after the knowledge no guru no student they are one although because of our human nature we keep respecting loving and admiring the guru that is how we are humans are but at the essential level even before there was no difference between the guru and student after knowledge also obviously no difference so only the ignorance was dropped ultimately all are one this play of the guru and student happens in this drama of the illusion and that is why it is so dramatic bk is asking are you not in facebook no 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 the facebook is in me so hopefully everybody got their questions answered and uh, we'll end today's meeting here and i'll see you next time